Hey there, Awana families. I am Pastor Carlos and welcome once again to this week's Council Time. Over the past few years, we have worked our way through Colossians and Philippians. Today, we be begin a study through Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The Ephesian church was planted by Priscilla and Aquila and then firmly established with Paul's help on his third missionary journey. Paul pastored the Ephesian church for some two years. Timothy would pastor the church after Paul uh, left the church, and Paul wrote the letter while in prison in Rome. The letter can be divided into two main sections. In the first three chapters, Paul presents the gospel. In the last three chapters, Paul applies the gospel. And this is the way it should always be. We should embrace the good news of the gospel before seeking to live in light of the gospel. The way we think shapes the way we behave. Uh, and we will see this as we work our way through the letter. Well, speaking of letters, it is always a good idea whenever writing a letter to begin with a greeting. And this is what Paul does in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. And listen to what Paul says. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I am entitling my message, A Beautiful Greeting. Uh, we will make three observations regarding Paul's beautiful greeting that communicates care for those reading Paul's letter. Well, let us begin with observation number one. Paul asserts his authority as the writer. The text begins, Paul. Right from the beginning, Paul wants it to be clear he is writing the letter. Paul is the one who once persecuted the church. His goal in life was to eradicate the church. But there was a day when Paul was traveling to the city of Damascus to attack Christians. And while traveling to the city, he was confronted by the risen Lord. Jesus revealed himself to Paul on that road and Paul's life was forever changed. He went from persecuting the church to proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is Paul who writes to the Ephesians. Paul goes on in the text to describe himself as an apostle of Christ Jesus. Apostle means messenger. In the early church, the word was used to describe those who had seen the risen Lord, were chosen by the Holy Spirit to lay the foundation of the church, and were given the ability to perform signs and wonders in order to authenticate or to prove the validity of their gospel message. In referring to himself as an apostle, Paul asserts his authority. This is an authority from God. His readers, therefore, do well to listen to what he has to say. And Paul then says the following, by the will of God. This is Paul's way of saying he is in the will of God. He is an apostle by the will of God. He is doing what God wants him to do, and he is writing what God wants him to write. The Lord uh, wanted Paul to write the letter with every intention that the Ephesians read the letter. I believe as well that it is the Lord's will for us, for you and me, to read, understand, and embrace this beautiful letter that Paul originally wrote to the Ephesians. So, Paul asserts his authority as the writer of Ephesians. The fact that Paul asserts his authority in the way he does uh, implies that we do well to listen and take to heart what he has to say in his letter. Well, let us now turn to observation number two. Paul expresses as affirmation of his readers. He affirms his readers. In verse 1b, Paul goes on to say, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful, in Christ Jesus. 
you will know this, Paul's affirming words to his readers. He refers to them as saints and faithful. In calling them saints, Paul is saying they are holy and set apart by God. He could have referred to them as vile and wretched sinners, but he chooses rather to affirm their identity in Christ. Through their faith in Christ, they are saints. And then Paul goes on to refer to them as faithful. It is one thing for Paul to call them saints. It is another thing to declare that they are faithful. Here Paul affirms that they are faithful to the Lord. They are living in a way that honors the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is not saying that they are perfect, for later in the letter he will exhort them to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord and he will provide specific ways in which they can live for the Lord. But here, in Paul's beautiful greeting, he affirms their faithfulness to the Lord. And a closer look makes it clear that their faithfulness is linked to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through their relationship to Christ that they are holy and faithful. So, we see that Paul affirms his Ephesian readers by calling them saints and faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let us now turn to observation number three. Paul invokes adornment upon his readers. In other words, Paul communicates his desire for the Ephesians to experience the blessings of God in and through their lives. Paul says it this way in verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is undeserved favor. Peace is an overall sense of well-being in body and soul. The two go hand in glove. You cannot have peace without grace and grace is foundational to peace. In addition, such grace and peace cannot be found anywhere else. You don't get this grace and peace from a sporting event, a great job, lots of money, perfect health, or straight A's in school. Not that those things are bad, but true and lasting grace and peace come from God. Listen carefully to Paul's words. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through our relationship to God that we have grace and peace. And notice the reference to both God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul refers to two persons of the triune God. He refers to God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father cares deeply for us he is committed to us. We are His children. Our Heavenly Father will never stop being our Father. And the reference to the Lord Jesus Christ is important as well. Apart from Jesus, we could never have a relationship with God our Father. It is through the blood sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that we are forgiven of our sin and brought into a relationship with God. Through his blood sacrifice, Jesus has secured our salvation. We have access to God our Father through the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself once declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So Paul invokes adornment upon his readers when he declares, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful greeting. What a wonderful way for Paul to begin his letter. He asserts his authority, affirms his readers, and invokes adornment upon his readers. He wants his readers to, to take to heart what he has to say. And along these lines, he wants them to know he considers them saints and faithful in Christ Jesus. And Paul wants them to know he, he wishes for them to experience the grace and peace that can come only from 
God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a minute to draw some final applications from our study today. First, like Paul, our care for others is to be grounded in the gospel. Second, our care for others is God's will for us. God wants us to care for others. Third, our care for others should come in the form of affirmation. We should view others as saints, and we should look for ways that they are faithful in Christ Jesus and point those ways out to them. And fourth, our care should include the desire for others to be adorned by the grace and peace that comes from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my young friends, thank you so much for listening. I trust you have been blessed by Paul's beautiful greeting. I pray that you will be a greeter of people as well. And I pray that the Lord greatly bless each and every single one of you.